Look at America. A sea of violence and bloodshed. And we blame it on declining morality, television, the movies. You know what? We're right. But for all the wrong reasons. No! No! We need to offer a real outlet for those dark impulses. And television tries. It pretends to understand. But like that, that pretty girl that only wants to hold hands. It's nice. But face facts. We just want to fuck. <laughs> no! Real death is, is one of the, the only things that has any impact on our tired, over-sophisticated nervous systems. And we need to feel that age-old rush of adrenaline as we fight for our lives, knowing that one mistake could end it all in the blink of an eye. simple, Mr. Chang. You subscribe to the channel, 
We deliver the box that unscrambles the signal. When we're ready to go to air, we call you one hour ahead of time. A million dollars is a lot of money, but we provide superior entertainment value. Just begun a new tournament. Eight days of non stop action. Camera three, tighter on Darkona. We operate out of an old mining compound in the Arctic. We bought it through a corporate shell from the Canadian government. Okay, camera five, stay on them, stay tight, stay tight. Camera three, don't lose them. No discounts, no money back, no guarantees. It's the nature of the beast, Mr. Chang. After all, all our competitions are to the death. Stay on it, don't lose them. Fantastic. man there tomorrow and you'll have the money for me yes excellent mr chang and cutting fee three two one yeah! mr hakeem yes no exit houston armstrong i understand you were interested in the quality of our competitors of course, we offer nothing but the highest caliber professionals. We comb the planet looking for just the right people to appear on no exit. My recruiters work 24 hours a day. Armstrong? We got him. How was he? Strong, fast, everything a world champion kickboxer should be. An excellent choice, sir. He'll make a fine competitor. Fine. Bring him to me, Mr. Tabak. We're traveling, sir. Anyone here? Ethics and application? Is that the right class? How much money you got on you, rich boy? Excuse me? I said, rich boy, how much money you got on you? Who the hell are you? Nice clothes, clean cut. I figured a hundred bucks on you easy. Maybe 200. Listen to me. You don't want to do this. Oh, why is that, rich boy? Because I'm a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. Is that so, rich boy? You think you're going to kick the shit out of me? Huh? You think you're tough? What if I don't give a shit if you're tough? Huh? What if I'm just going to rip your nose right off that schoolboy chicken shit face of yours? I told you I'm a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're Bruce fucking Lee. Woo! Listen, Mr. Lee, I don't believe you. I think you're full of shit. I think you're nothing but a rich college fucking Jew boy. 
What did you call me? I'll be. You are, aren't you? You're a Jew. Fuck, this is my lucky day. Huh? I bet you've got a whole lot more than hundred bucks on you, don't you? Huh? I'm a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. I am warning you not to pursue this course of action. You're nothing but a chicken shit Jew. Boy, this is gonna be fun. I'm gonna stomp you all over this classroom. You're gonna be nothing but a stain on the floor when I'm done with you. Just a little stain for your little Jew friends. Why don't you get the fuck out of here before I break your neck? You don't got the balls. Come on, you fucking kike. Let's see what you're made of. Come on, because I'm gonna kick the shit out of you. My name is Jason Samuel. I'm a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. If you attack me, I will defend myself. I have given you due warning. Warning? You're warning me, you fucking kike? The fuck do you think you are, huh? Huh? Turn on the lights. The words I've just spoken are words of hate, fear, and cowardice. Words never to be spoken. Prompted by emotions never to be felt. Mr. Samuel showed amazing restraint. He should have kicked your ass, Professor. Well, keep that in mind when I'm grading your thesis, Miss Buckles. Jason, I'm sorry to have to put you through that. But that's what this course is all about. I'm John Stoneman. Professor? Violence is never excusable. At times, in extreme cases, it may become necessary. But violence is always unfortunate, always regrettable, and always the last resort. This course, Ethics and Physical Application, is devoted to finding the way of the peaceful warrior, to embracing the spirit of warriorism while remaining passive in the face of aggression. Jason, you did an excellent job today in not falling prey to either my aggression or your own. Over the next 30 weeks, you'll all be expected to deliver a paper a week while completing a major exam at the end of the year. And in addition, there'll be training sessions every other day. Yes, I'm a tough professor. Yes, the workload is heavy. But at the end of this course, those of you who work very hard will have attained their master's degree and mastered their mind and their body. Chapters one through four of Janae to be read for tomorrow. Chapters, not pages, everyone. Good first day. Don't forget about the homework. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Jason? Jason, can I speak to you for a minute? Sure, Professor. I hope you understand why I couldn't let you know about what was going to happen today. I understand, Professor. I want to apologize for any pain or embarrassment that my words may have caused you. That's OK. But you know it would have kicked your butt, Professor. Maybe. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've had a serious confrontation, so it's possible. You hold three tenth degree black belts, don't you? Three? Why, I seem to have more every day. <laughs> Good day today. I'm very proud of you. Thanks a lot, Professor. Thank you, Jason. Excuse me, Professor Stoneman. Mm -hmm. I'd like to talk to you about something. Um, what, um, what would you like to talk to me about, uh, Professor Stoneman? <laughs> Um. How was class? It was great. No headaches? Mm -mm. You sure? Mm-hmm. Promise? I will stop teaching when I feel the strength. Promise. Who was today's victim? Jason Samuel. And? And he's going to be a very good student. How's Einstein? <laughs> I hope you know this baby's not going to be named Einstein. I'm not kidding. Don't we have a doctor's appointment? <laughs> I'm serious. I know you are. The amniocentesis is good. Very good. Oh, good. I'm glad. What about the heartbeat? Normal. So everything's mm -hmm. developing well, right? Mm hmm. Just fine. I know you're both anxious uh, about the baby, and it's understandable considering the uh, 
difficulty that you've had conceiving and Carmel, your two miscarriages, but mother and baby are healthy. Uh, however, in light of your previous history, I would be wise to, you know, avoid any serious stress and uh, keep away from any strenuous physical activity. But other than that, is there anything I can do? Yeah, take good care of Carmel and stop worrying. You're going to be a dad soon enough. So there's no problem, right? Well, my car is making that pinging noise again. <laughs> But other than that, no. <laughs> Carmel, would you take this man home and give him a glass of wine, make him relax? Doctor's orders. Huh? Thank you. Oh, feel better? I do. <laughs> I think I'll take the doctor's advice, go home, have a glass of wine, relax. Oh, good, you're still here. It's for you. Well, just in case you want to know what color to paint the baby's room. Well, hold on a sec. You mean you know if it's a boy or a girl? <laughs> so do you, if you want. See you in a week, Carmel. Thank you. Bye, Bye Doc. Bye, Doc. You see, the practical person wants to know the sex of the child. Because then they know what color to paint the room, what kind of toys to get. Whereas the impractical person goes for this prize. I, I don't know. I just... <laughs> what are we? Do we want to open the envelope? Do you? Huh? I don't know. Do you? Do you want to know what the sex of our child is? You know, we've wanted this baby for a long time. It doesn't matter if it's a boy or a girl. It's true. Waiting a couple of more months won't kill us. It's true. But... <laughs> but... What if Einstein's a girl, though? <laughs> well. You sure? <laughs> you know, I've got a confession to make. Come on. First time I saw you strolling across the campus in Paris, I wanted to ask you out right there. Mm, why didn't you? I couldn't speak French. <laughs> Thank you for making me the happiest man in the whole wide world. Oh, thank you. Mm. Wallet. Got that. Keys. Got that. Credit card. Be right back. What am I going to do with you, Professor? Love me forever. Be right back. OK.
Let her go. Get! Hey, listen. <clears throat> now that is not the answer. Oh, fuck this, man. Just let her go. Let's get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Please let her go. She's a pregnant woman. Please have some. Come on, girl. You gotta get by to my wife. Ah! You walk away from this now and nobody gets hurt. Fuck you, man. Please. If you wish to follow this course of action, I think it's only fair to warn you that I'm a 10th degree black belt in various martial arts. Black belt this, motherfucker! Oh. 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 Shut the fuck up! Let me go! Stop. Violence is not the answer. It's not what it takes to be a man. Drop the knife and let her go. We all walk away. Bullshit. Put the knife down, and nobody gets hurt. We all walk away. Okay? You want her? You can have her. Ah! Ah! Summer, Jay. Vital signs? Weak. What about the fetus? What about the fetus? What about the baby? She's gonna lose the baby, doctor? We're taking her into huh? the OR. But I gotta come with hey, you, right? You can't handle it. What do you mean? That's my wife. Yeah. I gotta go with her. Hey, let me go! Don't you touch me right up! Don't you touch me! Get out of here with her! 
Let me John, be wait here. Please. Let me be with her. That's my Let wife. I can't John. live alone. Let us do our jobs. That's the best way you can help Carmel. Wait here. Mr. Stoneman, you beat those thugs pretty badly. The kind of training you have must be very effective. Why don't you tell us about it? Get out of here. Just a couple of questions, Mr. Stoneman. The police say that despite your special right skills, they won't press charges. How do you feel about this? against what? They attack my wife. But because get of your skills, there are other people lying in the hospital bed. Don't touch me. We can right talk to you. How do you feel, Mr. Stoneman? Get out of here. How do you feel? I just saw the perfect competitor on a newscast. He's six feet, 195 pounds, he's trained, and he has combat experience. Who is he? His name is John Stoneman. He's a professor at a college in New York. Tenth degree black belt in three martial art disciplines. That certainly indicates potential. What's he done that's newsworthy? Well, that's the best part. A gang attacked his wife, he saved her, he killed one of the attackers and put two on the critical list. The press is hailing him as the all-American hero. How nice. Just what we need. A hero. Thanks for the light, Tom. Don't mention it. This way. It was very thoughtful of you checking in on us like that. Glad you arrived when you did. Well, everyone was really worried when they found out what happened. I just wanted to come by and see if there's anything I could do. Ethics and applications. It's one thing to deal with it in class, Jason. It's another thing to be truly provoked. No. I allowed myself to be provoked. I wanted to kill those people. All my training philosophy, I just disappeared. Everything I believed in was torn apart by my anger. I failed, and our baby died because I failed. Maybe there was something else I could have done. Anybody Maybe move, you're dead. Uh -oh. <laughs> Stoneman. Let's bring the kid along, too. Let's get this over with. We're going to air in five, four, three, two, one. Number three, get that long 
shot. Get off camera, camera two. Okay, camera three, stay on. Get off camera two. Camera one, stay on dark corner. All right, camera two, stay on dark corner. Number one, stay on the opponent. Move back, move back. Give me camera three. Hey. Come on, come on, now, now. Okay, stay in tight. Number two, stay in tight. Chopper has arrived and Stoneman is in the compound. I repeat, Stoneman is in the compound. Good. Bring him right in. Roger that, sir. Double time, gentlemen. Do not keep Mr. Armstrong waiting. He knows your names, your skills, your fears. Good morning, gentlemen. Where the hell are we? My name is Houston Armstrong. I'm an independent broadcaster. I run this facility. You've been chosen to appear on my next broadcast, a program called No Exit, which undoubtedly you've never heard of. This is crazy. It's not crazy. Gentlemen, No Exit is the only broadcast of its kind. Maximum entertainment value for maximum dollars. Right now, we're starting a tournament, and some of you may play in it. If you don't, we'll try to make your stay as comfortable as possible. What exactly is no exit? Professor Stoneman. How's that lovely wife of yours? Tragic. Truly tragic. No exit is a little game of my own devising. The rules are simple, the action fast. You fight an opponent until one of you dies. Easy as pie. Mr. Tayback will see that you're comfortable. Good luck, gentlemen. Some of you may survive. Move them out! This doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. I agree. That doesn't mean it isn't happening. Let's just deal with it. Right, Professor. death on television? It's probably a very narrow broadcast signal. It's heavily coded. The technology's there. The equipment's not that expensive. Well, great. Why don't we start up our own channel? Jason, it's important to stay calm and stay cool. We're in a very dangerous situation here. Yeah, you know, ladies, you're gonna need it. It's cold out there. We'll you have to tell me that? We'll get a handle on things. I have no intention of letting either you or I kill or die for someone's entertainment. Now just stay cool and calm. We're in the middle of nowhere, a frozen nowhere. There's gotta be a way out of here. We have to look, think, and know how to react. Yeah, 
Hate is out here. You got company. I could kill you right now, ladies. Who the hell are you? Shut up, bitch. <clears throat> hey, look at me, you faggot. Back off, Dark Owner. Fuck you, Doc. <laughs> Armstrong. The men are fighting in the cafeteria. Who is it? Darkona, Doc, Jason, Stoneman. Stoneman. God damn it. Take back it down there. Stop it. Roger that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> You just don't learn, do you, John? How you feeling? Anybody get the number that trucked it at me? <laughs> Congratulations on surviving Mr. Tayback's preliminary introduction course. <laughs> Name's Aaron Smithers. All the boys call me Doc. John Stoneman. It's Jason. Aaron Smithers. Hey, you were wide receiver for Chicago. I remember when you disappeared about eight months ago. You've been here for eight months? Oh, yeah, I've been here for eight long fucking months. You tried to escape? Believe me, there's no way out of here. I've been lucky. I'll find out for myself. You just go for it. He will. You got a nasty one there, huh? Yeah. That was a good hit. The only thing I can figure is we must be in some part of northern Canada. Maybe even inside the Arctic Circle. Could be. Well, they have communication here. I mean, they're bringing in supplies every day, right? Prisoners. Somebody's got to know we're here. Speaking of prisoners, what about the guy with the bad haircut? That's Darkona, the guy who attacked you. Uh, he's fought in three of Armstrong's tournaments, and he's been here nearly a year. See, that's what you get when you win. Chance to fight again and again. So what's his story? He killed three cops. He escaped from jail. I don't know. Somehow Armstrong was able to get a hold of this guy. We're seriously screwed. I'm out of here. Jason, you don't think everybody comes up here, tries to escape? Of course they do. But after a couple of hours out there, they come back, if they can find their way. There ain't nothing but rock and ice and snow out there. And Armstrong's men, they ain't coming after you. They don't give a shit. All it means is they're going to have to find another competitor. That's no sweat off their back. So what do you do? Stay alive. Fight if I have to. When I band together, we could overpower them. They outnumber numbers two to one. And we can't get organized with guys like Darkona among us. And they got guns. So you fight for this maniac? That's bullshit. Total bullshit. You listen to me. You just got here. You got no right to open your mouth up in front of me. And when you've been here for a month and killed a couple of guys, Put your life on the line three, four, five times. Then we will talk. I'm sorry, Mrs. Stoneman, but we can't find a trace of his whereabouts. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean there's no trace? It's not like my husband to just disappear like that. Well, I find it pretty hard to accept, too, Mrs. Stoneman. But there's nothing more I can do at this point. Your husband just seems to have vanished. Look, Detective. John was very upset. I'm really worried about him. He's my husband. I love him. I need to know what's happened to him. I understand. I understand. And
fast. Gonna use it? Come on, Johnny, use it. You faster than a bullet? Huh? Come on. Whoa. Noticing you're getting real chummy with the nigger and the faggot kid. Now I think it's really good you're making friends here at camp. Be awful if something happened to him. Well, stand the fuck up. Armstrong wants to see you. Professor. Professor of bullshit. My altar. Sit. Share some tea with me and meditate. I like to think you'll do very well on our little show, Professor. I feel you bring a breath of fresh air to the proceedings. I could kill you right now before Teabag could even fire his gun. But you won't. I'd be dead, and Mr. Tayback would kill you. So what would it get you? Revenge. For what? I haven't done anything. Oh, well, maybe a little kidnapping, but nothing that warrants my being killed. At least not by you. Not yet. Besides, I have the feeling that revenge is beneath you. You're more... noble. John, let me tell you about no exit. Oh, you think it's barbarism, an anomaly, a few wealthy sickos who want to watch men beat each other to death, a truly fringe audience. But you'd be wrong to dismiss it so easily. What do you think no exit is if not sick? An essential service. How many cultures have their blood sports? All of them, I'd say, in one form or another. Football, hockey, boxing, well, they're just more genteel versions of what I offer. And guess what? They're not doing their job. Well, look at America, a sea of violence and bloodshed. Oh, we blame it on declining morality, television, the movies. You know what? We're right, but for all the wrong reasons. Well, we need to offer a, a real outlet for those dark impulses. Well, television tries, it pretends to understand, but, but like that pretty girl that, that only wants to hold hands. It's nice, but face facts, we just want to fuck. Death, real death is, is one of the, the only things that has any impact on our tired, over-sophisticated nervous systems. And we need to feel that age-old rush of adrenaline as we fight for our lives, knowing that one mistake could end it all in the blink of an eye. And if we can't actually participate in the killing, then the next best thing is watching it. You're so wrong. You confuse perversity with potential. My impressive sales figures tell a different story. You're the one who's wrong, John. And the sooner you admit that, the happier you'll be. Breathe with me, John. Welcome to the key event. Tonight we've got Aaron Doc Smithers, former linebacker for Chicago, versus Chi Fung, one of the fastest, hardest hitting fighters from Hong Kong.
breathe, Doc. You're not breathing. Stop. You're not breathing. If you don't breathe, you become tense. And if you tense up, your reflexes are slow. So you have to breathe. And bend your knees. Relax your shoulders. I want you to get in touch with your inner spirit, your inner strength. Feel that power down there. I want you to feel that. Feel it. Concentrate. your body into mine. Feel that power, that strength. One punch. Bring your arms up. Concentrate, focus. Power. Inner strength. To me. Again. 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 Breathe. What is it, Gary? Jefferson killed himself. We found him hanging in a storeroom. He was supposed to fight tonight, wasn't he? That was the plan. How disappointing. Perhaps it's time we throw our Professor Stone into the mix. <sighs> Armstrong, I told you I'm not going to be any part of this. Fight, or both of you will be shot dead immediately. I assure you the weaponry you see around you is quite real. Now fight, damn it, and make it good. Forgive me. No need for forgiveness. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Tonight is the cage event, the fences electrified, as are the staffs, both deadly. And it's John Stoneman's first event, his first match, his first test. He's a skilled athlete. We all know that. Very accomplished and proficient in martial arts. The big question is, and it's a big one, can he make the kill? Stoneman's opponent tonight is Ronald Henry, the world champion heavyweight kickboxer and a formidable opponent he is indeed. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
For a smart guy, you're pretty damn stupid. If you keep this up, you're gonna get yourself killed. Keep what up? You know what I'm talking about. You've got to kill your opponents. If you don't kill your man, Armstrong's gonna kill you. Have you got that clear? Can that overeducated brain of yours break that down? I won't kill. You listen to me. It's not an option, John. What if we all refuse to fight, refuse to kill? Then he'll kill us all, one by one. Then he'd be out of business. Oh, no. I'm sure we'll just keep bringing in more and more competitors like he always has. And what if they refuse to fight, refuse to kill? Then he'd be out of business, wouldn't he? What if there was a war and nobody came? Ah, oh, come on, John. You're forgetting about guys like Darkona, men who get off on violence and murder. But you and me. We can make a difference here. We can set an example. If we refuse to play Armstrong's game, we send a message to people like Armstrong. People that abuse fellow beings, like hate mongers, Nazis, racists. People like Armstrong must be stopped, Darren, no matter what cost. Well, I don't know if I'm ready to pay that price. What if we can't escape? What if this is the only way out? I'm not gonna play by Armstrong's rules. I killed once before. And maybe I was justified. Maybe I wasn't. But I will never, never kill anyone under circumstances like these. Reports from our field operatives suggest that Stoneman could be a problem with uh, subscribers. How uh, so? Well, we had complaints in Cairo, Delhi, and in New York. Complaints? Really? Our subscribers are complaining. They were upset Stoneman didn't kill his man. Is the man alive? No, he died about an hour ago. Why did he die? Because of injuries sustained in last night's fight. Seems Mr. Stoneman did his job, then. Sir? You missed a spot. You will play by my rules, John. You are violating every imaginable concept of human decency. You kidnap people and you turn them into animals. And you do this all for the lowest of reasons. Money. I don't know, it's like something in that sick mind of yours seems to rationalize that, justify it. I mean, you practice sophistry and you assume airs of wisdom and superiority. But you're nothing but a very greedy and very exploitive man. And I'm gonna stop you. Go ahead, John. Make a move. See how long it takes the guards outside my office to make you a memory. Very eloquent, though. Untouched. You know, there were times during your fight last night when I thought we'd lost you, but you pulled it out in the end. Perfect. Just perfect. Well, almost perfect. You see, the man you fought did not die during the telecast. Oh, he was in a great deal of pain, but he didn't die until the show was over. I don't think you ever intended killing him. I think his death was just a happy accident. It starts to get around that our competitors only sometimes die. It's not good for business. Business? Men like you call slavery business. John. This is my world. I own it, and I own you. You'll kill when I say kill. Fight when I say fight. I won't fight. I won't kill. But you already have, John. What about those poor young men you killed while protecting your wife? That was self-defense, and that was more than justified. Don't you throw that in my face! 
You see, John, everybody justifies, rationalizes, even you. Anyway, I'm not too concerned. When a man is faced with the decision either to kill or be killed, I put my money on self-preservation every time. Don't be too hasty, John. Remember, all our decisions impact on others, friends, family. You leave my family out of this. You hear me? Let me guess. Filet mignon? Barbecue shrimp. Calamari? See your own sweet meat. of winter, there is an invincible summer. Breathing was much better today, Art. Maybe there is hope. Hope? Hope for what? Hope that you kill a couple more guys before they kill you? Huh? Hope to stop the suffering, Doc? Cool your jets, Mr. Samuels. We gotta escape. Or we gotta kill them. There's no more options here. Jason, our opportunity will come. I'm not dying in here. Or on television. I'm ready to escape now. Are you coming? Or are you staying? Jason, listen to yourself. Come here. Jason. civilization we try to escape now we'll all die out there
your time will come, baby. Wakey, wakey. Someone would like to get to know you a little better. What? <laughs> date. Personally, I think Jason liked it. Have a nice night, John. Jason, you're right. Don't touch me. This is your fault. Do you understand? This is all your fault. I'm sorry. You sorry? Get out. Leave me alone. Jesus. Get out! Pretty sight. You son of a bitch! That was a warning, John. You wouldn't obey me. That's what happens when you don't obey me. People get hurt. Innocent people. But the name of the game is kill or be killed. He's a kid, for God's sakes! John, I'm a reasonable man. That's why Jason's still breathing. Next time, I might not be so reasonable. Come on, John. Get into the spirit of things. Kill somebody.
fuck? You make a sound, I'll kill you. transport compound and he's got an ATV. Shall I have him stopped? No. Let the professor go. Roger that, sir. Fool. You'll die out here. I'm not gonna let you kill yourself. I'd rather die free than living there. I'm taking you back. I'm going back. You won't make it. It's the only chance I got. No, it's not. Come back, Jason. We're all gonna get out. How? I don't know how. But I promise you, we're gonna get out. We're gonna get out. I'm gonna get out. Drop the gun. Get out of the truck, Armstrong, now! Jason, drop the weapon. Armstrong, get out of the truck. Get out now! Five seconds, did you hear him? I want to go home! Put the fucking gun down! Five! Four! Jason, what are three, you doing? Drop the weapon. Gentlemen, Two. gentlemen, gentlemen. Jason, put down the gun. Put the weapon down, Jason. You don't want to kill anybody, okay? Listen to John, Jason. We can work this out. We're gonna get out of here. I promised you we're gonna get out of this. Good. Thank you, John. Okay? Kill him. No! <laughs> Hey! 
Armstrong holds a much higher opinion of you than I do, Professor. Me? I figure you're just about good enough at this, huh? Somebody clean him up. Get him out of there. Mrs. Stoneman? Hmm? Mrs. Stoneman? I have some news about your husband. Get up and get dressed, and I'll take you to him. Mr. Armstrong sends his apologies. He's been detained, but he'll be with you shortly, John. The show's just about to start. I'm afraid I don't have any chips or popcorn to offer you, but I'm sure you'll enjoy the program just the same. John, I want to talk to you about something. I'm thinking of starting up my own broadcast. I've got a great deal for you. You wouldn't have to kill anyone, just fight. We would do all the killing for you. Interested? You get me out of here, you understand? I need to see my wife, and then I'll think about it. Finals with Doc Aaron Smithers, former linebacker for Chicago. Aaron? Aaron! Jesus, no! No! Stoneman's heading to the pit. Do you want us to stop him? No. Let them get a good taste for each other. It'll make good promo. Okay, switch over to five. Where's Bob? Right up. There I'll just say goodbye to that packet stoneman for you. Camera three, tighter on dark corner. What do you want on your tombstone, asshole? Get ready for a log. Okay, camera three, stay on him, stay on him.
Very beautiful, Professor. John, we need to have a little talk. There's nothing to talk about. Oh, no, we have a great deal to talk about. John, let me explain something to you. You're not going to win. You can't. It's just not part of the plan. I'll win. I may even kill Darkona, but I will win. And there's nothing you can do to stop me. Yes, there is. Say hello, John. You see, there's a great deal I can do about it. No exit is my game. I created it. I run it. I say who wins and who doesn't. But I thought I was good for the game. Well, you are. Better than I'd hoped. But the problem is you're a short-term benefit. Now, Darkona, he's in it for the long haul. He's the man they love to hate. They'll tune in just to watch him lose, which he never does. Because if he can't handle it, I can occasionally kind of lend a hand. Cheating's all part of the show, John. You're insane. Well, don't you see, John? You are a good and intelligent man. A few more fights, and you'll be just like Jason or Doc. Just another victim. I need continuity, John. A continuing character. Nothing personal. Just business. But you are going to take a dive, John. Sacrifice your life for the life of the woman you love. What could be more noble than that? After all, isn't nobility what you're all about? What guarantees do I have that you let her go? Just my guarantee that if you don't do what I say, I will kill her, and I will make you watch, and then I will kill you. John! I'm really... Sorry it has to end this way, John. But bottom line is the bottom line. And the good businessman always goes for the long-term investment. Armstrong! If you harm so much as a hair on Carmel's body, I'll tear you limb from limb. And that's a promise. <laughs> that's a promise! <laughs> you hear me? I'll kill you! <laughs> yeah! Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the conclusion of our tournament. Tonight's event is the final event, and it's Darkona versus Stoneman. The event we've chosen is the key. We're all familiar with it. All right, let's get this over with. Go near in five, four, three, two, one. Both competitors are wearing wrist cuffs. Fasten about their wrists. The only way they can be removed is by the key card at the end of the corridor. Jesus, I hope he doesn't lose. <laughs> Me too. I think you'll find this very interesting, Mrs. Stone. There's an intensity in our broadcast unlike anything you've ever seen before. We're very proud of our work here. Stoneman to the starting line. Here comes Darkona. Darkona has five minutes on his wristband. Stoneman has two. So the pressure is really on for Stoneman to make it to the end and liberate the key card, which will guarantee his freedom. They're off! Stop this now! Won't be much longer, Mrs. Stoneman.
be long now, Mr. Stone. Feel a thing. Camera seven, close up on stone, they're pulling up the knife. Yeah. Transmission terminated. Congratulations, John. You won. Somehow, you killed Dakota and managed to beat me at my hey, own Dave. game. But we had a deal! And you fucked me over! You hear me? You fucked me over on my show! On my show! It's over. Bullshit! I say it's over. I really hate Armstrong. Me too. Let's go to air. What would your subscribers do if they knew you'd kill my wife and I in cold blood? I don't fucking know. Hunt me down. Kill me on my own show. Tell their friends to subscribe. I have no idea, but they don't know, do they? Well, they do now. Dave. Dave, you cocksucker, you're fired, you hear me? And that goes for you too, Hank! Armstrong, it's over. Why? Because I kill your wife? Because I kill you? Hell, it's a bonus, John. I kill people all the time. Every broadcast, I send three or four people to their deaths. Life is cheap, John. Your life, my life. Money is the only thing with value. You don't know the meaning of value. It's television, John. <laughs> you can't stop me. A few good lawyers and I'll be right back in business. I'll just open up somewhere else. You can't stop me, John! You're right. I can't stop you. You fuck! Let's get out of here. Wait a minute, let's not be hasty here. No, John, I just want to tell you one thing, okay? Armstrong is gone, it could just be you, and it could just be me. Hundreds of millions of dollars. What do you say, John? John, it was just, hey! 